Aloha everyone, I'm Jay Dreamers and welcome to uh, Tuesday Topic Day where today we're talking about the Great Memory Reset or the Great Memory Wipe and we're going to go into a little detail as to how the entire world could experience amnesia all at one time. We're going to talk about amnesia and the thoughts and memory and things of that nature. I'm also going to fix my screen here on my side real quick. For pow. All right. Sorry, one second. Let me just fix this window capture. There we go. All right, cool. So, hey, thanks for visiting my channel. Uh, thanks for coming back, for all, everything that you guys do. I appreciate it. It really motivates me to keep researching and sharing with everybody. So, uh, I do talk about the world coming to an apocalyptic end from time to time, usually all the time <laughs> lately. And um, as a part of that, my research has led me to an event that happens during the apocalypse or shortly afterwards where most of humanity most of mankind uh, forget they experience worldwide amnesia to certain degrees and levels you know there's always anomalies and things of that nature there's always those that don't those who retain their memories of what happened before the apocalypse occurs and that's what we're going to talk about this theory and idea that there is a worldwide amnesia now Today, in our world today, there's obviously amnesia. We forgot how to survive. We forgot how to live. We forgot how to live off of the land. All kinds of things, right? That's a collective progressive amnesia of the world. I'm talking about an instantaneous amnesia as well. Something that happens because of how the world changes. So we're going to talk about a few of these different things. I do want to jump into the chat. Let me open up the chat real quick here. Popping out the chat. <laughs> There's a lot of people in the chat right now. Oh, as always, if you want to get my attention, I'm, I'm, I'm going to try to be in the chat as much as I can. Uh, you got to type in at JDreamers, though. Okay? So, hey, thanks for everybody for joining us. Basically, the theory is that whenever this apocalyptic event happens, the world, as we know it, comes to an end. And because of how it changes, or it doesn't really end, but because of how it changes, it affects many people's memory. And I want to talk about how that could be possible in that type of a scenario. I call it the Great Worldwide Memory Wipe. So what is it? Let's go ahead and I'm going to start screen sharing for a bit here. Oh, well, that's the wrong screen. Let's get to, let's start at the beginning, shall we? Amnesia. Now, before we get into actually what amnesia is, I'm also popping out the chat right now so I can like keep up with everybody. I wonder... Here we go. Okay, I'm just going to stretch this out a bit more. There we go. All right, cool. Uh, let's see. In the chat, in the chat. Boom, boom, boom. Kiora. <laughs> What's up? Hey, it's Joey Styles, first live stream. What's up, Joey? Our ancient future says hello. What's up, ancient future? Hello to the future. Space Monkey Mafia says, what's up? What's up to everyone in the chat? All right, I'm going to come back. We'll hang out for a bit too, but I got to... Uh, I got to multitask here. So the first thing I want to talk about is I like to talk about amnesia. I want to talk about the science, the facts, and, you know, all the different things that they say about memory or guess when it comes to memory. But I also want to talk about what I think of. The first thing that comes to my mind is all the pop culture references, like video games, movies, books, all of these themes that permeate throughout our pop culture. Just look at how many video games there are that just came up with the a cursory search of the subject. These are all the different video games that are about somebody that has amnesia, waking up, not remembering who they are, what year it is, where they are, etc. I feel like that might stem from our collective subconscious, that we have forgotten certain things throughout time. There's also movies about memory loss, amnesia. 50 First Dates is classic. See, it doesn't have to be sci-fi or anything. That's a romance, etc., right? Uh, I mean, it's kind of a funny one, too. Uh, we've got, let's see, what's another good one? Uh, these are all pretty good. Oh, Dark City. I actually did a review on Dark City. 
That one's really good. That's about forgetting your memory. And a lot of these people, it's like the main person, they need to remember. They have to remember who they are. They need to remember instead of forgetting. That's the whole excitement of the movie is that they forgot. They have to figure it out. And you're right there along you're, you're right there along with them figuring out who they are. And it resonates for some reason. Like, man, I got to figure out who I am. The Forgotten, Eternal Sunshine. These are all really great. The Island. Oh, my God. These are all really good. So there's countless examples of movies about memory loss and whatnot total recall let's close that one out okay so that's what i think of okay i believe that these movies and our creative mind touch the ether itself and we draw upon truths that we feel that we sense and so we write about them we feel compelled to share them to talk about them maybe in a way that's more acceptable than modern philosophy is these days amnesia let's talk about amnesia what is amnesia? Amnesia is basically when people forget, right? Something that have, has a part of their life, right? They forget a part of their life. It could be who they are. It could, and, it, and it varies in degrees as well. There's varying degrees of amnesia. So you can have severe, where you don't remember a lot of things, or mild. Raven Rock Studios is in the chat and says, JJammers, help me build a ship and we'll go to something. I don't know what that says. Yes, we could totally do that. We could do whatever we want to. All right, so back to this. We've got amnesia. Let's look at the causes here. I'm going to make that a bit bigger for everybody. Can I scroll it over? Just scooch it over? All right, there we go. So uh, we've got head injuries. Okay, so I, I want to preface this by saying that there will be many, I'm sure, okay, I just I assume that there will be many varying degrees of you know people that get amnesia and how they get amnesia for example if it's the apocalypse and a house falls on your head or whatever you might get a head injury you could get amnesia there are probably little instances but i'm not talking about those little instances i'm talking about things that could impact everyone worldwide on a worldwide scale so we've got um let's look at these things emotional shock or hysteria can you imagine if the world suddenly came to an halt as you knew it, right? As everyone knew it, the lights turned off in the sky, the sun shut off, there were no stars, there's plasma streaking down, it looks like the stars are falling to the ground, everything's starting to shake, the atmosphere implodes or explodes or whatever, and it's hard to breathe, all these things are happening, right? Do you think there might be some emotional shock or hysteria that could cause amnesia? You know, people get into a severe car accident and they can't remember certain things depending on how the severity of it because it's such a shock to the mind, right? And I want to talk about shocking the mind too because there's two, there's like good shocks and bad shocks. We'll talk about those. Uh, let's see, certain drugs such as barbiturates or heroin, but that also goes hand in hand, in my opinion, with general anesthetics. Now, specifically, instead of generally, I talk about nitrous oxide and how nitrous oxide uh, will appear in various pockets or clouds around the world, just kind of as it develops, because new chemicals are introduced into our world during this reset that happens, right? We are out with the old, just like out with the old atmosphere, in with the new atmosphere, out with the old air, in with the new air, um, out with the old vibe, in with the new vibe, you know? We also have electroconvulsive therapy. Okay, so that's a PC word for shock therapy, all right? Electroconvulsive. Don't worry, it's just electroconvulsive. It's, it's totally mainstream these days. <laughs> yeah, it's electric shock. That's what it is. So shocking the brain can also cause severe amnesia. Stroke. Now, this stroke one is really interesting. This actually reminded me of a verse in the Bible. Uh, let's see, where is it? Oh, here it is. I have it highlighted. Let's go ahead and make this a bit bigger, shall we? So this is talking about the end, of the, the end of days, right? It says, And there shall be signs in the sun and in the moon and in the stars and upon the earth distress of nations with perplexity, the sea and the waves roaring, men's hearts failing them for fear and for looking after those things which are coming on the earth for the powers of heaven shall be shaken. So, whatever this is that's happening in the Bible, <laughs> it's talking about earthquakes and the heavens, aka space or the sky, is shaking, everything's moving. People have heart attacks. They have strokes. They're, 
they're freaking out, you know? It can be pretty terrifying if you're not prepared. If you've never even thought about that as a possibility before, it's unrealistic. So when it happens, imagine what that does to a person's reality or sense of reality instantaneously, depending on how deeply ingrained they are in that reality. Uh, let's see, we've got, what else? A mini stroke, Alzheimer's, brain surgery. Brain surgery is an interesting one to me because I do believe, and I talk about when the plasma apocalypse happens, that the plasma enters down into our world. Our entire realm fills with energy, okay? Electromagnetics, there's ball lightning, there's uh, sacred bees, whatever you want to call them. There's, a, there's plasma all over the place, okay? Magic in its purest form. And I also believe that there is an influx of different types of energy, aka wavelengths or rays, like X-rays, gamma rays, all these different types that can penetrate the body and, you know, the mind and stuff like that. And they can actually perform brain surgery by changing or restructuring DNA at the molecular level. Possibly. It's a theory that I have that I've been working on. Memory is mysterious. This always cracks me up when they're like, oh, it's so mysterious. You know, we just, as if it's just mysterious to everybody. It's like, yeah, it's mysterious to modern academics. I'll tell you. The ancients taught a lot about memory, what it is, how it works, why it's important, and also why it's important that we lose it sometimes. It's called Maya. Um, Maya, I should actually touch on that. So Maya is like a Hindu concept. It's also found in Sikhism and Jainism and some other um, cultures and belief systems. But Maya essentially means illusion. It's a veil. It's a veil to hide reality from you to make you think that what you're looking at is the reality. But it's not. You forget the actual reality. And that Maya, that veil of illusion, has been draped over mankind for my entire existence, from what I've seen. Let's talk some more about memory. Uh, let's see here. What triggers... Oh, okay, so I want to talk about amnesia, okay? So I, I'm going to give you the foresight because I'm going to skip a, a few things here. Scooch that over a bit. So amnesia, um, like real amnesia, like, you know, long, huge, like you're forgetting chunks of your life and stuff. It, I looked it up and it says long-term depression encompasses a family of synaptic plastic, plasticity plasticity mechanisms i'm gonna okay i'm gonna read this but then i'm gonna explain what it means okay long-term depression encompasses a family of synaptic plasticity mechanisms that can be triggered by the synaptic or pharmacological activations of glutamate receptors in particular nmdars n methyl d aspartate receptors and meta metabotropic glutamate receptors or receptor blah 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 okay okay, okay. <laughs> or receptors for neurotransmitters all right sweet let me explain what that means basically what happens is when these synapses are activated or deactivated based on how they're deactivated and why okay that causes memory loss or it causes restorative memory and it can essentially be switched on or off um, within the body. And it's, they call it, when you lose it, when you lose your memory, it's called long-term depression. That's the action that happens and occurs within the synapses of the brain. Now, the question that I ask is, how does that action actually happen, right? This right here is not short for California. Let me go ahead and make that a little bit bigger. CA2 is um, calcium. And then the plus means ion, okay? So this is the involvement of calcium in amnesia. Now keep in mind that much of our bodies are made of calcium, okay? They're like batteries for the flesh. We call them bones and stuff. All right, so let's check this out. I'm going to read this. Further research has... Uh, I can't talk today. Further research has... Research. Research, Jay. Oh my God, say the word. Further research. I'm so excited right now. I'm like, I'm so excited to share this information. Further research has determined calcium's role in long-term depression induction. All that means is calcium is hugely involved in amnesia. While other mechanisms of long-term depression are being investigated, calcium's role in long-term depression is defined and well understood as a mechanism by scientists. I always says scientists, right? 
Like, what scientist? Well, I was just a scientist, bruh. Just, there was some, all right? Okay, it's totally fine. I accept. High calcium concentrations in the postsynaptic perjunky cells is a necessity for induction of long-term depression. So what that means is calcium is an important ingredient in forgetting your memories. There are several sources of calcium that sig uh, calcium signaling that elicit LTD, long-term depression, climbing fibers and parallel fibers, which blah, 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 blah. Let's see. Where's the good stuff? Okay, so essentially, let me skip this page here and get right to the meat of it, okay? Where does the calcium ion come from? Plasma calcium levels in mammals are tightly regulated with bone acting as the major mineral storage site. Calcium ions, Ca2+, are released from bone into the bloodstream under controlled conditions. Ah, calcium is transported through the bloodstream as dissolved ions or bound to proteins such as serum and al albumin or whatever. Anyways, the point I want to make here is calcium is transported through the bloodstreams as dissolved ions. So the ionization of calcium, right? Calcium. Okay. Let me just explain this. Calcium can be solid and then it can also turn into a plasma essentially, or an ion, however you want to call it. It is ionized. Um, so where am I going with this? Thank you for holding on. I appreciate it. I know that's a lot of sciencey stuff. Hold on. Now check this out. We're talking about calcium in the body and ionizing. How could that possibly happen? Right? Ionization in general, occurs whenever sufficiently energetic charged particles or radiant energy travel through gases, liquids, or solids. So all that means is a lot of energy whoosh, influx passes through the bone or your body or your brain or whatever. The energetic electrons resulting from the absorption of radiant energy and the passage of the charged particles in turn may cause further ionization called secondary ionization. So what that's saying is if you're exposed to a lot of radiation, the stuff that's inside of you could just be ionized because it's exposed to that, okay? Because it's very powerful. What does that mean? That means that the calcium that is in your body can over be overwhelmed if it was suddenly, I don't know, had electric current run through it from a, an electrical tempest or worldwide apocalypse. Um, and it could ionize the calcium that's inside of you, causing you to just... Flooding your brain and resetting your brain, bzz, causing you to forget, turning off all of those synapses, off all of them. You would wake up going, who am I? Where am I? What am I? Or whatever, you know, whatever people do, I don't know when they wake up. Uh, which leads us to, does electric shock cause amnesia? Canadian researchers have shown that an electric shock ranging in 120 to 52,000 volts can cause neurologic and neurophysiological symptoms in humans. Following an electrical injury, some patients may show various emotional and behavioral after effects such as memory loss and symptoms of depression. Imagine that, right? Hey, somebody just regenerated. Angir Ghi. Angir? Angir Ghi. Welcome to the Good Vibe Tribe, Angir. Nitrous oxide also, remember, also causes amnesia, right? So if you have these pockets of nitrous oxide or NO floating around in like little clouds throughout the earth, um, you could also just suck that all up and totally affect your memory loss as well. Some things may stack to be like amplified. So there may be varying degrees and levels of memory loss. However, just imagine people who've been in a car crash, like they forget everything and then boom, the, the whole world comes to a basic, basically an end, or life as they knew it comes to an end. That's a pretty serious shock too, especially if they never were prepared mentally, considering these things, thinking about these things. And that's one reason why I do like to put it into, you know, make it available to other people to consider and ponder. So that way, at the very least, if it does happen, you're not caught off guard. You're actually not surprised at all. Now, if you happen to be in one of these nitrous oxide clouds, how much would it take before you die? You don't want to breathe in too much nitrous oxide, so I looked that up. If you breathe nothing but nitrous oxide for 10 minutes, you'll die. Um, so, keep that in mind. I do have a gas mask, etc. Um, the effects, if you're, if you're inside of one of these nitrous oxide clouds, um, you'll go numb essentially. Okay. So you could injure yourself, not even know it. You might even think it's funny. 
okay? Because you'll be high as well. It's laughing gas. Um, so what you want to do is try to find like fresh air if you can, if that happens to you. And watch out, get out of there. So we talked about that in a few different videos. I'm not gonna harp on it too much, but nitrous oxide is another way that people can lose their memories. So how do you get such an influx of nitrous oxide, right? The largest natural source of nitrous oxide is from the soil under natural vegetation. Now keep in mind that all the soil in the world is said to just break up. There will be worldwide earthquakes happening all over the place. All of the world's soil is going to basically release a lot of nitrous oxide and other uh, chemicals, other gases and stuff. This produces 60% of the natural emissions. So just think about that, right? As far as the numbers go, let me jump back to my notes here and then I'm going to jump in the chat and join you guys. Let's see, where did I put those? All right, so we talked about the great worldwide memory wipe. Okay, it is definitely my belief thus far that this does happen. I think the movies... You know, if uh, if we go with synchronicity and comparative fictionalism, I'll call it, boom, then um, we can definitely see a trend, right? There's a trend that we're forgetting, that we don't remember. And also, I would say we live in a time where people are starting to just, it's, it's like at the back, it's like scratching at the back of their mind. It's on the tip of their tongue. And they're returning to that, returning to the old ways. We talked about what is amnesia, right? Basically, people forgetting a parts of their life and events that happened to them. Most survivors of this polarity flip or the plasma apocalypse, I believe, will experience strong amnesia because of the things that happen. It also reminds me of like that part of the Bible where it says that the Lord will send them a strong delusion and things of that nature happening, right? I believe that there are many people who survive who will wake up and not remember who they are or where they are or what's going on. The world, it'll look like they've been transported to a different planet, if anything. Um, and try to imagine just your local geography. If all the buildings were destroyed, would you be able to know where you were based on the land itself and how it flows and how it moves and where different hills were and you know what I mean? So we talked about the synchronicity within fiction and movies, video games, and pop culture. This concept that people wake up usually on an island somewhere, right? They don't remember who they are. They don't remember what their purpose is or why they're there. And everyone's all kind of waking up at the same time. Or the main plot is about the, um, like the main character, he or she just can't remember who they are. And it's this whole journey to rediscover their memories. Excuse me. We talked about what causes amnesia, and I think it's funny that they say memory is such a mystery, right? Mystery is almost like, let's just leave it alone. Let's just chalk it up to being something we don't get. No, man. Let's dive back into our past and see what we've already learned about the memory. Now, we also talked about long-term potentiation, which is your synapses turning on, and you remember everything. Or long-term depression, bzz, synapses turning off and you're forgetting things. How that could be caused by electrical impulses, shock therapy. Um, you know, like in a lot of these movies when they're having this electrical storm, sometimes people will like try to force them to look into the lights or whatever. Like I think that that has something to do with um, possible loose strands of plasma that's, that kind of float down and seek to dock themselves, you know, to ground themselves to certain things, including people. Um, and if that happens, it's very possible that they could not just become plasma possessed, but their memories could be wiped electrically. Their brain could be reset, literally. We talked about ionization of calcium in the body and how calcium or the calcium ion plays a huge part in long-term depression or losing your memory, essentially. And um, Uh, what is it called when you lose your memory? I totally just forgot. Oh my god. It's happening. It's happening already What is it called amnesia? Thank you <laughs> um, We also talked about nitrous oxide and its involvement now just keep in mind. These are just these are just some things There's also other factors and circumstances that could play into people keeping their memories or losing them Okay now speaking of keeping your memories. I also am inclined to believe that this is the the origin of the whole tinfoil hatter thing, you know, like, and pff, that blows my mind, right? People are wearing these tinfoil hats and 
other people are making fun of them saying that like, oh, they think they're blocking the aliens signal or whatever. But imagine, I mean, it, and I could see how it sounds ridiculous. I mean, yeah, it kind of does. What's so funny about that? Joshua Allen just donated five bucks in the super chat. Thanks, Joshua. Um, so anyhow, the tinfoil hat, right? Might wouldn't that be crazy if it actually ended up saving or helping these people? Because that tinfoil around the cranium acts as a sort of temporary and small scale Faraday cage, which means that it keeps away the electrical impulses to getting into the brain. Now, there might be different and varying degrees to that. For example, all of royalty knew that you should probably cover your entire body in metal. And that's why they came up with chain mail and knight's armor and things of that nature, right? Uh, let's see here. So, yeah, the tinfoil hats, there may be some truth there to, to sort of protect the mind. I mean, think about Magneto, right? He's got a little magnetosphere helmet deal going on to keep Professor X from getting into his head and stuff like that. I think there's a lot of symbolism there too. Uh, we Also, could this be a possible origin for tattoos? I've also seen that in a few movies where people have forgotten things so they like tattoo themselves so that when they forget again they can like look at their body and go, oh yeah, oh that person's good or that's my family member over here or here's what just happened and, and try to help themselves out because they're preparing to forget because it might not be easy to, you know, to prevent possible origin of tattoos. That brings me to today's time. And I think it's time, it's the time of remembering. In the deepest, darkest parts of our history, there's always a light that starts a renaissance, a rebirth. There's a light and people flock to the light and then they realize they can make their own lights and they start and that light spreads and the darkness doesn't like it because <laughs> it only takes a little bit. So I think it's time to remember Maybe that's something, you know, that the Mandela effect has something to do with. This concept that people remember things, but totally different. They're actually questioning their memories, which is good. I think that's great. Uh, yesterday we talked about, somebody in the chat had mentioned, you know, how to prepare yourself or make yourself better and stuff like that. And I said, run a self-diagnostic. And I still recommend that. To test our limitations and our boundaries to see what makes us shudder to see what shocks us because yesterday we also we were breaking down that movie infinite the infinite or whatever it's called and they said in order to remember you have to shock your mind one shock psh, turns them on one shock psh, turns them off right so if you don't remember you got to shock the mind right and i i say you do that through uh just testing yourself out seeing what you're comfortable with and what you're not hey az nature girl just donated five bucks and says Thanks for sharing the knowledge, brother. I so appreciate you. Oh, that's sweet. Thank you. You guys are great. All right. Uh, let's see what else. Stories about the main character remembering who they really are. That's the thing, right? Who are we really? You know, I, I think a, a lot of you may resonate with the similar things that I do, which is this world and this construct and the way things are, the system, it doesn't feel right. It doesn't feel like home. There's something missing and there's this longing to return home. But first, you have to remember the way. To get back home, you got to remember how to get back there. You got to start looking around and remembering the things that you've seen before. Anyhow, let me stop rambling and jump in the chat. Boom. All right. So, hey, thanks for the donations. Mother Dragon's in the chat and says, Doctor Who with the silence. Hash marks on the skin. That's right. You, you look away, right? You the, the moment you stop looking at it, you forget about it. Right? It's important, I believe, I think that's a good thing to, to bring up. It's important to keep your eyes on what's important. Like, because in this maze that we live in, the walls shift around. Things are constantly moving. There's a woman in a red dress or a guy in red shorts or whatever you want to call it, okay? There's distractions aplenty, especially when you start to find the right path. That's the moment that a distraction is going to pop up. Hey, Davey818 just donated five bucks and says, absolutely, dude, I'm completely covered in tattoos. I always say that every tattoo is a chapter out of my life. Great show and cheers. Oh, yeah, Sucker Punch, too. Oh, you guys are, 
Oh, you guys have some sweet stuff happening in the chat. Yeah, Sucker Punch is a really good one too. People remembering who they are. But think about this. It's not just remembering who you are individually, like your spirit memory, like what past lives did I individually live, but it's remembering who we are collectively, where we come from, why there is a sense for a group of good and why there is a sense for a group of bad and why there is this sense of um, things that happen and to the world and befall everyone. Things that we all can relate to. Things that we all go through. Because we all have, I believe, at one point in time when this happens. When the world hits the reset, when the polarity shifts, you know, the poles switch places, however you want to call it. Many people regard it as different things. Ragnarok. Uh, some people say it's the Book of Revelation. Some people say it's the end of the world. Life as we know it. It's a change. It's a beginning. It's a rebirth, etc. And so on and so forth. I believe this is something that is integral to what we have all been through at some point. Or at least we see its effects like a pebble in a pond. We see the waves moving out. Hey, Timothy Possible just regenerated. You know what? The regeneration is supposed to be like a once in a lifetime gif that people get for joining. Clearly I have to change how often it pops up because we've got like 18 Doctor Who's now. <laughs> hey, what's up TP in a tree? Haven't seen you in a bit. Good to see you. Arizona Nature Girl. All right, I'm going to go through the chat, see if I catch anything here. Oh, Joshua Allen put a little super chat sticker. That's tight. I like that one. Oh, uh, let's see. Oh, Cross Tofar of the Sun So Far says, J Dreamers, after soil liquefaction, gas pockets will float on up from below. Complete, completely makes sense. Uh, we see it with methane. Yeah, totally, absolutely. So, you know. That's, these are all things to keep in mind. So if you see things that are happening that are hard to explain or they're, they're hard to figure out for you, some people may chalk that up to just magic they're just or spiritual or religious or whatever, right? They just chalk it up to a story and it's their story. That's how they experienced it and I love it. I love that we all have so many different perspectives of the same thing. It's great. Okay, uh, let's see here. Jen Card knows in the chat a while back. Sorry, Jen. And says, Jay Germers, what about radiation levels? Can that cause amnesia? I would assume so. I don't know, honestly. My guess is totally. Joey Styles just donated five bucks through the super chat and says, You're so positive and appreciative, man. It's a breath of fresh air. All of your content hits home. Thank you. Hey, you're super welcome. Thanks, Joey. I appreciate you. So here's the deal. Like, I see that the world's messed up and. How else can we change it but to change our minds about it, right? We got to accept it. We accept what's bad as being bad. But, but it doesn't have to impact what we expect for ourselves in our future, you know? If we understand what we're working with, then we can start to partake. Then we can start to change it. Then we can start to understand how it works and become involved in it. But if we don't understand where we come from, where we're going, what's happened to us, why things are the way that they are. It's going to be a lot harder to climb out of that hole. So that's why I like to investigate and look into these things. Have I watched Yellow Rose of Texas YouTube videos? <gasps> no, I have not. <laughs> I don't watch a lot of YouTube, just so you guys know. Every once in a while, when you recommend someone, the next day, I will read the chat and I'll go check out that channel. I did that the other day. Um, somebody did like a survival one in the chat. Uh, oh no, it was a Sasquatch one. It was a totally Sasquatch channel. <laughs> and I went and checked it out. So yeah. All right, so TP in the tree. We're going to take a couple more and then we're going to wrap things up. Um, does anybody have any questions? If, I, I, I want to make sure like, you know, if, if I missed something, because I do miss things occasionally. I have so many different things that I want to address um, that I get overwhelmed and forget some things sometimes. Imagine that. Uh, so TP in a tree says, J Dreamers, I usually miss the live stream as I'm asleep. It's 4 a.m. in England. Well, hey, what's up, England? 4 a.m. Thanks for staying up and watching. Unlearn the system. Hey, what's up? Says J Dreamers, the deepest hole ever drilled took 20 years and couldn't go any deeper than seven miles. And that's because there was so much water down there. Oh, that's right. 
I think I heard a story about that too. And then there was also that island that has that weird cave system that goes down and there's allegedly like a treasure at the bottom or something like that. But like every time you dig further, like it fills up with water or something like that. That was an interesting one too. The wild dog of crazy world says, J Dreamers, good stuff. Your videos are great. Keep it up. You're changing lives. Giving good advice. Awesome, brother. Hey, man, I love it. That's that's why I, that's why I do it. It makes me feel good just to share. Not that I'm right. Not that I, you know, am like God incarnate or, you know, here's all the truth 100%. It's just fun. I love it. I love giving you guys an avenue and being a conduit for other people to say, oh, wow, I can think outside the box. I can imagine. I can be creative. Wow, imagine that. You know, my thoughts have validity to them and come from and stem from truth of some sort. So yeah, man, I love it. Thank you. Davey818, what says, Dreamers? Dr. Manhattan did that electric shock on you to make you remember or the whole world too. Dr. Manhattan was definitely my favorite character in that movie. Uh, Cypher No One. All right, this will be the last one, and then we're going to take off. Cypher No One says, Jay Dreamers, I know you aren't a fan of anime, but check out a movie called Wind of Amnesia. Ooh, that sounds super interesting. <laughs> All right, Wind of Amnesia. All right, I'm going to go through the rest of the chat tomorrow. Sorry if I missed you. Just remember to type in at Jay Dreamers. Now, exciting news. Tomorrow I'm going to give it a shot. I don't know. I, I might... It might be tomorrow or it might be next Wednesday. It depends on how late I stay up tonight editing this sweet intro I want to have for it. But I'm going to have a new segment where it's a call-in show. Okay? So it's going to be for members. If you're members, you know, you can watch the video and call in and stuff and participate. Um, and I'm going to experiment. See how it goes. Okay? But I would love to have other people to talk to and ask you questions and hear your insights and your ideas and stuff like that. And I think everyone else would like to hear you as well. Okay, it's always good whenever you have something or to like sharpen up against so that both people become better, you know, and uh, I like that. So I'm pretty excited about it. Hopefully we'll do that tomorrow. Um, if you're here, I'll see you then. And until next time, I'm Jay Dreamer saying good vibes and goodbye. <laughs>